Oh, hi there. So today I am going to be out here planting just a few things. Uh, my pile on the side of my house <laughs> of plants that need to be planting is gradually dwindling down here. As it showed, we are now in towards the end of September, which is nuts. I can't believe it. I'm starting to come to grips to it though uh, because it is freezing out here. So I've kind of transitioned into like my warmer clothes and hats and boots, unfortunately, because I hate wearing socks and shoes. I just I just hate it so anyway we just have to embrace it for <laughs> for what it is and uh, just roll with the punches here but anyway so I'm gonna be planting these things right here I've got this fern this is called a Japanese holly fern and I don't have any of these in my garden yet I got this for 40% off I think at Horrocks and it's been sitting in my um, driveway for Oh gosh, I don't know, like three weeks maybe. But I loved this fern because it was more of like a glossy feel and texture and look to the leaves. And um, like almost like a holly bush. So that makes sense, holly fern. But it says it is uh, hardy to zone 5, negative 20. Now we can get really, really cold here in Michigan. So we'll see. I always say my zone is like a 4 or 5 because you just never know depending on where you plant it in my yard or depending on how bad of a winter you have or just the habit of the plant itself how much protection it gets over the winter there's lots of factors that go into it so i always say i'm like kind of like a four slash five zone uh so we'll see how this does i'm gonna plant it down in my gully and it says it gets eight to 16 inches tall uh adapts well to dry and moist conditions plant in partial shade or shade so that'll be a perfect spot down there in the gully for that but Japanese holly fern. So pretty. And I think it sounds cool too. Like if it was a windy day, that'd be pretty to hear that blown in the wind. Uh, then right here, I've got this Dream Weaver Hasta. And that is the tag. And that is the Hasta. It is so pretty. I love the color and the variegation on this. It like, I think when I picked it up at the nursery I said it kind of reminds me of like the opposite variegation of a uh, autumn frost hasta the proven winter shadowland series one and ooh, there's a, sl a snail on there you guys always ask me if I have slugs and I don't usually but I wonder if that came from the nursery there's little tiny snail we'll just put him right there because he's so cute Anyway, um, yeah, so this is a dream weaver. I don't have any dream weaver hasta in my garden. I've got a dream queen. It's really pretty. It's got super thick, dark green edging, and then just like a little tiny strip of like creamy white yellow down the middle. It's so pretty. I've had it for quite some time. But anyway, I'm pretty excited to plant this, and I could split it like in the middle here. I could, there's about like three shoots in there that I could split, but since I don't have any of these, I'm just gonna kind of plant it and let it be its own singular specimen wherever I plant it, give it a couple years and then maybe dig it up and divide it. So we'll see how it does. But this says, uh, Dream Weaver Hasa, one of the least demanding, most satisfying perennials in the garden. Round, puckered foliage with sea green. Ooh, sea green, that's like the little mermaid down in the gully. It's gonna be pretty and creamy yellow centers. Blooms are an added bonus, ideal for specimen foundation, mass plantings, makes a dependable mixed border plant, especially nice in woodland gardens. So that'll be nice. And it says for the light requirement, shade. So a lot of times if it says like part shade, I'll try it for sure in the sun and see how it does for me. Cause I just like to do experiments and try that kind of stuff. Um, but if it just says shade, uh, especially for the first year planting it, I'll keep it in the full shade. Uh, space, 24 to 30 inches, uh, 18 inches high and wide. So kind of like a medium grower. Zone three to nine. And there's some other stuff, but I mean, it's a hosta. How hard can it be, right? So pretty, dream weaver. And then I have this Atlas Rose. I got this at the garden center too. I got that for, or this house I got for 
30, was it 30 or 40 percent off i can't remember 30 or 40 percent off along with this atlas rose and it's so pretty i've been wanting one of these atlas roses but i just don't want to pay full price for them uh and so i got it for 30 or 40 percent off i can't remember um but it goes in the sun three feet tall and wide zone five to nine i think it's a repeat bloomer yeah reblooming is one of the characteristics fragrant disease resistant so that's going to be awesome so there's a the little tag on that if you want to see it it's so pretty the color is really pretty and i don't have this color rose in my garden yet but i have to show you how pretty this is it's just been sitting in my driveway, <laughs> blooming like crazy. And I think I'm gonna put it down in my uh, rose garden and we'll see how it does. I think I wanna put it next to where my delphinium are. My delphinium are blooming for a third time. So, if you've watched any of my movies, you know I'm not like a huge fan of flowering perennials in my garden. I love flowering perennials, but since we have such a short growing season, I try to steer clear of them because I just don't think it's worth it for them to bloom for like, you know, two, three, four weeks out of the summer and then they look like kind of crap <laughs> the rest of the year and I don't have time to, you know, mess with them, cut them back. Uh, just I, I just don't I don't want to mess with them but there are a few that I do plant and one of them is delphinium because after the first bloom you can hack it back and it will rebloom another time this year I hacked back the second bloom and it's blooming a third time I'll show you so I thought that wouldn't this color look really pretty next to my true blue delphinium I don't know we'll see when we get down there Ooh, first things first. Gotta fix the flag. Oh, glory. Ugh. There we go. Whew. That was close. So I'm down in my gully, and what I do is I just kind of um, walk around and look for a spot to put things <laughs> that's, that's all I really do I kind of like stare off into the distance and like you know kind of imagine like oh would that look good there no yes we'll see I'm looking for spots that need this type of color and texture I just kind of walk around and just stare at everything hopefully I don't come up on a snake <laughs> But we are over here in Raccoon Alley, and I don't know, this down here, I really put lots of thought into it when I put it in. I put all this section in in 2020 during quarantine. <laughs> My gully garden only went to like about right here. And I, well, there was a, a tree there and it died. So we, we cut that tree down and I thought, you know what, I wanna keep going. So this bed right here kind of I don't know it kind of ended where the tree was which i wonder if you can still see the stem there, there is this tree in here and okay. my gully garden it kind of stopped right about here and gosh what i think i just had like annuals in here and all this was uh woods and in 2020 i came in here like a crazy person during quarantine and I cleaned all this crap out and put this in so I had lots of time to think about how I wanted it and anyway my point is I really don't need anything down in this area at this point I just came in here and I put in like a bunch of hikara in here um, because the raccoon kept digging out some oh, what did I have in here sweet tea I think the raccoon loves to dig that sweet tea hooker out, so um, this is what happens in my gully because we're uh, under a bunch of trees here. But I just kind of throw it off into the side over here. Uh, 
Anyway, what was I saying? So this area is pretty much good. And this area, I'm gonna come in here in the fall and just revamp and work on it where my husband cut this dead tree down too. So we will leave this for now. And let's see here. I'm just looking where that fern would be pretty. Oh, I still have to get another August moon and plant it right there. Maybe we'll do that today too. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna walk around and look for a spot. There's a nice little spot in there. We could put it there. So I, so I got both of them in here. The Dreamweaver Hasta and this fern. I feel like the color of this Dreamweaver looks really cool against that uh, blue angel there, but I like the texture of that in between all these other hostas. So I think I'm gonna put that there and then I see back here a, um, a, I think that is an August Moon Hasta. I think I'm going to dig that up. It, it just reseeded itself there. And I think I'm going to put it over there with the other three August Moons. So while I am over here, I'm going to dig up this, I am assuming it is a August Moon Hasta. It could be a summon substance, but it reseeded itself about, I don't know, three years ago or so, and this is the uh, biggest it's gotten. So I'm thinking it's not a summon substance. It just looks more like an August Moon to me, but I could be wrong. Either way, I'm gonna dig it up and put it with the other two I have over there right behind my bench. <laughs> right up. It's easy. <laughs> you don't have to do hardly anything. This is the spot I wanted to put the other August moon, so it's right over there, I just dug it. And I wanted to put a third one right here. And I'm gonna come in here quick though and pull all these weeds. Great. So I'm gonna bring it close because I just hit a giant root and I know I've showed you before what I do when I hit roots but um, this is a pretty big one and I'm not even sure what tree it is going to but hasta roots are like roots on steroids like you really just don't have to fuss with them too much you just dig a hole and stick them in the ground, make sure they're watered uh, sufficiently and they should be fine. So what I'm gonna do is uh, just plant it around the root and it will be just fine. Okay, right here, there's a pretty good sized root. It's about four inches wide, I don't know if you can tell. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just plant my hasta right there. I'm just gonna shift my hole just a tiny bit and it will be, just fine yeah so that will be just fine when you're digging hole for hasa you don't really need a deep hole uh, uh the roots don't go 
too deep they kind of just go wide so I'm just going to dig a little bit more wider on this side and we should be good after that you just kind of shave a little bit off of the edge there oh there's another root see that one if you can see that one so there's one there so that hassa will do just fine sitting in between these two roots so i'm going to pour some water in the hole make sure all these roots right here are down in that hole and covered up we don't want any of them exposed to the air and just fill it in. <laughs> Have you been to Jesus? <laughs> yep, and then you just stuff on the outside. And you should be good to go. This hasta will not skip a beat. It, it's like it won't even know I transplanted it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. If y'all are newer to dividing and splitting and moving things around in your garden, you're a little bit nervous to do it, I would start with a hasta. Um, you really can't go wrong with a hasta. They are super resilient super hardy and just really tough plants. So, I mean, like I said, as long as you make sure the roots are down underneath the soil and you water it in really good, uh, <laughs> I honestly, I, I've i never lost a hasta ever from transplanting it. So I just get more and more and more and they just multiply like crazy. So if you are, afraid and timid to dig up, divide, or split your plants, start with a hasta and I'll pretty much guarantee that it will give you a little bit of confidence because you'll be like, oh, that wasn't too bad and it came back. So anyway, okay, so after looking at this for a minute, I have to tell you in my head what I'm thinking. So there are a few hastas that have reseeded themselves. Uh, one of them, I believe this blue angel right here, reseeded itself there, and I thought it was really pretty right there. Um, but I do have two other blue angels. Oh, hey bud, what you doing? You gonna plant with me today? You gonna dig some holes? Anyway. I'm sure he'll sit there and chirp at me if you start hearing something nuts. So this little group right here, these were all pasta that reseeded themselves. I thought they were all the same kind because this is an elegans and these are two blue angels. They look really similar when they're younger, but now that they put on some size, I can tell that, like I said, these two are blue angel and that's an elegant. So I feel like I kind of want to move. <laughs> He's literally just sitting there staring hey bud you're so cute though so I think what I want to do is move that blue angel uh, so that it's with this so there's like a clump of three and then I want to put that elegance maybe over there I hope that makes sense let's try it So now we're going to grab that blue angel and put it right here. So there's a little trio.
All right, it is getting there. That is much more pleasing to my eye to have a clump of the same three hasta right there. And then a nice big elegance to kind of anchor that area off right there. So when I, I came in here years ago, um, I cleaned all this out and I just threw hasta in wherever and I thought, you know, we'll let them do their thing and then I'll move them as we go. So I've kind of, as, um, you know, as we come this way, I've kind of done that up until here. So this area right here has always been kind of in hodgepodge. Actually, that little area too. I'm gradually getting this area in shape. But this area has been just like, oh, find a cool hosta on a clearance cart, buy it, stick it in the ground right here. So I'm trying to rearrange and find like a nice pattern that helps your eye flow more. So I've got these two sum and substance hostas here and I kind of want a third one in this area to kind of keep your eye going this way. So I thought maybe I could put one right back there. That would kind of help, you know, draw your eye this way. And I have this giant sum and substance right there. I can move that back there. And that would give me room to kind of rearrange this area right here. that move for now now this little area as you can see I've kind of got like a little pea stone bed right here with these blue mouse ear hosta and then around that I've got this Japanese painted fern and then I kind of want to do like a third layer of something and I like this variegation but this hosta right here this is a forbidden fruit and it's always kind of bothered me right here because it just it looks out of place it's beautiful but I kind of want to put it somewhere else where it can kind of shine in a spot that makes more sense. So I'm thinking I might dig that up and move it right back there. That will brighten that area back up. And then, let's see. So this is an elegant Tasta right here. And I was thinking of moving that Heuchera somewhere else because it's not really serving any purpose right there. And then moving this gold standard Tasta right there so they kind of like go in a nice little round border around this elegance and then so that will give me that space and then I was thinking of either splitting that Patriot Hasta and putting all around here or I have I think five uh, Autumn Frost Hasta in my dump garden uh, just waiting to be planted somewhere so I could go grab up all those and put those in a little half moon around here. So let's get started on that. wanting to do that for a long time just to clean this out and have it be a nice little place for your eye to rest with some pattern going on so let's go grab those um, autumn frost hosta and see if those would look good in here I think that they might I left that Patriot back there and then I dug up another hosta I'm not sure what it was I have to wait till it gets a little bigger to be able to identify it but I don't know, it looks like it might just be like a royal standard maybe, I'm not sure. But we might end up splitting that Patriot up if we don't like the, um, what's it called? If we don't like the Autumn Frost. So let's go over here. We'll take a walk through Raccoon Alley. All right, so I have one, two, three, four, five, and if I had to have get a sixth one, I 
I probably could split that one up. Let's grab these. I think that those would look really pretty in there. it because it makes those uh, Japanese painted ferns stand out a lot more before they kind of got lost in there so what I'm gonna do though is I am gonna have to split a few of these because I want them to go all the way around so I'm gonna work on splitting them all right I brought my little shovel just in case and I brought my hori hori knife so what I'm gonna do is just take it in there where there's that where there's that natural division there and I'm just gonna take my knife and cut right down the root ball. And sometimes you just gotta kinda sometimes stuff it in there like that. Kinda like like a watermelon. I feel like sometimes you gotta stick your knife down in there first. There, and then we just split it into two. Now, I'm just gonna kinda take my fingers and kinda do that like when you're in the shower and <laughs> you're washing your hair and some of your hair falls out, you just like kinda take it off like that. So you don't wanna plant it with all these roots in there because they are not attached to the root ball and it will just rot and die in there. So I'm gonna discard that. There, now I've got two two plants. Now they will be, you know, pretty small, but that's okay, they'll grow in. Let's do that with, well, let's see here. Yeah, I could do it with that one actually. That is a, vir that's a Virginia creeper. Um, while we're here, let's just do it. So this knife is really cool. One of the edges is serrated like that. Yep. So that gave us two hot stuff. And then, like I said, I'm just going to go are no longer attached. All right, so now we've got four instead of two. So I'm gonna continue to do that with the other three hosta and then we'll get them planted. nearly 22. Either good nor bad, just a kid like you. That looks pretty. So I was thinking we could put it right there. I think these colors look really pretty together. So yeah, that is the third time that my delphiniums have bloomed. And now my pink anemones are blooming, so that's really pretty. And then if I put this rose in here, goodness sakes, I love that. <laughs> it's so pretty. 
All right, let's get it planted, and I gotta go back and get my bag of compost I left over there, so let me go grab that. All right. So, yeah, I have this um, Creeping Jenny in it. I just planted one plant up the hill and it's been creeping down and every once in a while I go in and just pull it back. I don't like it to get too out of control but it isn't that hard to just pull back like this and it it can be controlled really easily. And I'll just throw this in the woods and maybe it will like seed itself in there or root itself. <coughs> but the same thing with this anemone here it kind of just reseeds itself too so here's another little plant so i'm gonna probably dig this up and there's an anemone too i'll probably dig both of these up and plant them maybe along here We're all done. And I know that might seem like I just did a bunch of crazy stuff out here that didn't make any sense, but in my mind, it does make sense. Uh, I just basically, if you might've heard me say before, a lot of the plants out here, actually, I would go out on a limb and say pretty much 99% of the plants out here I got um, on clearance. And so when you get them on clearance, it's not necessarily specific plant that you might be looking for at that time you just get it whenever you see it on the clearance rack and so I grab it I just throw it in the ground somewhere and eventually um, when I have time and when I have space I move it to where I want it and that's kind of how I have just evolved all of my gardens I guess and it's not only uh, cost efficient but it's really fun <laughs> i have a lot of fun doing it i have a lot of fun moving things around and seeing how they do in different spots and i love just testing things out and pushing the limits uh so that's what we're doing now all right so we went ahead and dug up my autumn frost hosta from my dump bed that i was saving and put them in this little half moon shape and i ended up getting nine plants from five plants so i put i think there's seven in here so there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But one of the plants didn't have that great of a root system on it. So I planted it with another one. So that's eight. And then I had one extra one. So I ended up putting it just over there in that corner. Then I had a Patriot Hosta right there, which I bumped back there. And this is where I ended up putting my Dream Weaver right here. And then, else did I do back here oh yes I moved my forbidden fruit right there I took a third blue angel and made a clump of three there and then put 
a sum and substance back there to kind of shine that area up and I think this will look really pretty back here. Um, I feel like these blue has to just kind of blended in with the woods or the, the shrubs there and so this will create some nice shine back here and then eventually I want to extend my uh, row of Annabelle, Annabelle hydrangeas and make them go all along here but it's gonna take a while. Then I went ahead and moved my elegant Tasta that was right there and put it right there. So that looks really good right there. It kind of just anchors your eye in that spot. And like I said, I have always loved these two sum and substance here. I think that will help kind of carry the light color back to the back there. And then I ended up digging this out and I decided I think this is a halcyon hosta. And so I just put it right there. I thought that would be a nice solid dark color to just kind of anchor your eye uh, with everything that's going on in here. And yeah, I might have to rethink this whole situation, but I don't mind it right now. And there's just some leaf thing. <laughs> so pretty. I might actually take that inside and put it in a vase. Then I went and I plopped that heuchera that we dug up. I think it was, I don't even know. Oh, the heuchera the was right there. And I dug that up and uh, put that gold standard there. And then I just put the heuchera right there, which is nice because now I've got three in a row there. And that is a Rebecca that just <laughs> seated itself there so I'll we'll eventually have to move that. Oh, I don't think we did anything down there. So. Actually I forgot we did do something over here. We put in a third August moon hasta. So I think that looks a lot better. So let's shift to this area and I'll go slow. Actually, let's let you see from this side. Yeah, so I think that would be pretty, this line of autumn frost around there. All right, now, what else did we do? Um, so we came up here and we planted, oh yes, the rose. So we came up here and we planted our um, at last rose and I put it next to these delphinium that have been blooming all season long. This is the third bloom. Here's some more down here. And then this one hasn't even opened up yet. It's, a, it's gonna bloom still. But yeah, this was the second bloom right here. Actually, I didn't even chop this one off and it uh, shot this one up. So this was the second. That's the third. really cool plant and then down here we've got this pink anemone with a rose right next to it so i think that'll be really pretty and now that i have the camera down here i'm noticing uh that orange nephopia over there that is really pretty too so the color kind of like jumps and makes your eye kind of shift over there as well so that's really neat i wasn't really planning that but worked out these are so pretty thank you guys so much for watching I hope that that was kind of fun just watching me move some pasta around and I didn't plan on doing all that but before I put those uh, before I put the, the fern and the dreamweaver in the spots I wanted them I had to move a few things around and this is the perfect time because it's fall and um, fall is perfect for planting and they'll have plenty of time to get established into the ground. And like I said, if you are kind of scared and skittish uh, and timid to uh, divide and split your plants, try try to start with a hasta. I really think that you will be encouraged after you see the success from it. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching and just hanging out with me. It's really awesome to be back in the gully. I love it down here and everything is looking pretty good considering it's September. All right, we'll see you later. Bye.